Every one of your little excursions presages some inexplicable catastrophe. Not that you are to blame for the Dominion's fate. No one could have predicted the actions of the Crown Prince. I'm sorry I couldn't save your home. My countrymen are stronger than you think. A few toppled clock towers won't break their spirits. They'll be back on their feet in no time. Tempting though it may be, some king will not help us find a solution to this mess. You believe there's one to be found? I don't know. But I am certain we're more likely to find it if we first examine the facts. Beneath these darkened skies, fear and confusion reign over Valisthea. Oh, the lands around the fallen mother crystals had already begun to wilt for want of ether. But not like this. Crystals that filled wells and fueled furnaces. Now nothing but pretty shards of rock. And those that hang from the people's necks cast nearly a glimmer of light to keep the dark at bay. It is only a matter of time before the common folk convince themselves that the end of days is upon us. Yet I fear a swift end is more than we can hope for. While most of the world thirsts for ether, the remainder drowns in it, spawning a cache in droves. And amidst the hordes of mindless beasts, with magics as light to fail as function, even the strongest nation would falter. Rosaria and the Iron Kingdom teeter on the brink of collapse, while the tragedy in Twinside has all but paralyzed the Holy Empire. Dalmechia fares little better. Rumor has it the ministers fled the capital after the fall of Drake's Fang, leaving their beloved Republic to crumble. Wulund, meanwhile, moves in earnest. The Iron Hagar has been sighted off storm. The world, in short, is in chaos. It would seem our civilization was nothing but a castle of sand. To be washed away at the whim of the waves. A castle of sand. Not my best flourish, but it seemed fitting. The reports I've received are considerably more blunt in their appraisal. Without the protection of their nations, it will fall to the people to defend themselves against those who would take what is theirs. Which is only ever going to end one way. 
Defending a farmhouse against a band of chocobo thieves is one thing. But pitchforks and palisades will do little to stall an army's advance. Should the king of Wulu deign to invade, there would be none to stop him. Hmm. There's talk of these skies driving me mad. First we find Isabel. The blood stains saw ghosts on the far side of the wall.
saw it with my own eyes. The garrison's been slaughtered by those things. We lost the captain this very morning. We've tried requesting reinforcements, but there's been no word from the capital or the Dominion in days. What more would you have us do? I would have you do your duty. Those at the Vale look to me for protection. And protect them I shall, because they are my charges, and that is my duty. In case you have forgotten, the people of this town are your charges. But more than that, they are your people, your sisters, your brothers, your lovers. So you have a choice. Lay down your sword and watch as they are slaughtered, or take it up and do what is right. She speaks the truth, you know. This is it. It's all we have. It's all that's left. What we have left is our lives. Do you really want us to lose them as well? Not if we don't have to. Look, there's a cask under the captain's bunk. Let's talk about this over a drink, eh? I'm listening. I don't have a word for Ah, oh, Clive. I didn't expect help to arrive so quickly. And sort to take matters into my own hands. It was a noble effort, but I thought you might still need some support. I'd like you to consider my needs. Um, <clears throat> what we need to consider is where the creatures came from. The way the survivors speak of them, one would think they appeared out of thin air. <laughs> and perhaps they did. It's hard to know what to believe these days. Hmm. We'll talk to the survivors. Thing. Did you see the creatures that attacked you? Creatures? Uh, yeah, I... They, they came, came out of nowhere. nowhere. They, they went for Josie first, then me, and then... Then they were just... gone. Do you, Do you remember, remember where you were? On the road from Oriflam. And we, we just passed more when... When... It's all right. Just rest now. It's all right. Give me your arm. You're a pikeman, yes? What happened? I've got family in war. I heard the flood was spreading, so I went to see if they were all right. And a pack of them glowing things found me in the meadow. I ran for my life, life. and never did get to the finish. Leave that to us. At least we have an idea of where the brawls might be now. We should head for more. 
Let's go. There are always more. But I'd say we've done what we can for the time being. Then we should let his bow know.
You have the town's thanks. Don't thank us yet. There will be more. Many more. And you'll need to be ready for them. Oh, we shall. Isn't that right, Captain? Yes, my lady. The garrison will be ready. Felipe has convinced most of the men to remain at their posts, for now at least. <laughs> Hearing that the dame would look kindly on any man who committed himself to the task certainly didn't hurt. It's not the most selfless of motives, I'll admit, but whatever it takes, eh? Now me, I never needed to convince him. I became a soldier to protect the people I love. And the people I love include the ones standing before me. <laughs> Handsome and chivalrous. Now, if you don't mind, I have sentries to post. Milady. Lest you wonder, I am not foolish enough to believe that this has solved all of my problems. But it has solved one, and that's one fewer than I had this morning. Thank you again, Clive. Martha, it's good to see you. And you, Clive. Jill? Otto said you've been attacked by a Kashyyyk. What exactly happened here? Those skies are what happened. Not long after they fell dark, we had our first visit. There were hundreds of them trying to storm the hill. Only a handful made it up here, but that was more than enough. The rest are still down there now. And while we have a few willing fighters holding them back, they're sorely outnumbered. What do you think, Clive? That we join the fight. I thought you'd never offer. Now, where I need you is the Fallen Gate. That's where the fighting is fiercest. Let the men know you come to help. Something tells me they'll be pleased to see you. We're on our way. Do you think there were as many as Martha says? <laughs> you ask more, or I may go too slow. Stop. Stop. You're alive. That's all that matters. Clive, wounded. We deal with the Akashic first.
These men don't have the look of hired swords. If you come to rob this place. You are mistaken, my Lord Rosfield. We're here by Madame Arthur's leave. How do you know my name? Forgive me, my Lord. There wasn't time for introductions. We're with the Guardians of the Flame. Wait, man. But how did you come to be here? Where is your commander? So wait, left earlier with a scouting party to find out where the Akashic were coming from. Did he? Take your wounded back to the inn. Martha will see you looked after. We'll join you on. And to think you took them for thieves. A fine reward for holding off the horde, that is. When did Wade and his men arrive? Not long after Rosalith fell, the Guardians asked me to shelter some of them that had lost their homes. They were making ready to leave just as the skies turned, and we agreed it was best we stuck together. Mother! Troll! The scouting party's almost at the lift, but they got a pack of Akashic snapping at their heels! And they got wounded for them! They're not gonna make it! Damn it all! We'll worry about them, Arthur. You look after everyone here. If any can still fight, send them to the lift. I will. You two be safe now. I need you to get those who can still walk up the lift to Martha's. But what about... I didn't ask, Oscar. Sir. So, so wait. Lord Rossfield, if you aren't a sight for sore eyes, Martha seems to think you might need some help. And by the looks of it, we thought we could sneak by them. But we didn't know there would be so many. How could we have? Damn it! We need to get the injured to safety. Do you think we can hold them off? We can certainly try. Are you with us away? Always. Then let's do our duty.
Is anyone hurt? I don't think so. And yet again, you've pulled me from the flames. It's just a pity I keep walking into them. <laughs> you've never been one to show away from danger, Sir Wade. Like any shield worthy of the name. I see you're all in one piece. Mother! Is something wrong? A look, I saw a smoke coming from down this pool way. Too thick to be a hearth. A second horde. Jill are finishing the job. Always. Jill and I will make these pools. You'll need to move the engine without us. Don't you worry about them. The moment my men are safe, I'll follow. Good luck.
anymore. No. I think, I think that, that was the last, last of them. them. But, but it won't, won't be long before, before the next lot arrive. Then we we'll make for Mars as well as we can. What did, did you find, find out there? there? The same as so Wade. Scores are Well, wherever they came from, they're gone now. Our lookouts say the lowlands are clear. Hopefully we'll have enough time to lick our wounds. How many of your men were injured? Damn sight less than if you hadn't turned up. Thank you. It was a hard-fought victory. But as long as the skies remain dark, I feel the Akashic numbers are only going to rise. It's, it's not, not a matter, matter of if the Horde will be back, but when. And whether that sooner or later we'll need to be ready. The inn here affords a good view of the land, and is easily defendable. I'd like to make this one of our outposts. What do you say, Martha? You'd have more men to guard the rest. Well, when you put it like that, of course they can stay. My lord, there's, there's someone, someone I'd, I'd like, like you to meet. meet. Oscar, over, over here. here. It, it is, is an, an honor, honor to make your acquaintance, Lord Rossfield. Rossfield. I am Oscar. Oscar of House, House Murdoch. Murdoch? I wasn't aware the Lord Commander had children. Oh, he didn't. But his brother... My father did. I am Sir Rodney's nephew. <clears throat> well, go on, then. It's not for me to ask him. Yes, so wait. If it please you, my Lord Marquis, might you take me as your squire? I would learn the duties of a shield from the finest. I'm sorry to disappoint you, Oscar, but I'm a shield no longer. Nor was I ever the finest. And spending time in the company of an outlaw hardly seems a fitting education for one aspiring to take his oath. My Aunt Hannah once told me that a man is not defined by his title, but what he does in its name. You have accomplished much in taking on the mantle of Sid, winning no little honor in so doing. And, and I, I would sooner serve under an honorable outlaw than an unworthy sheep. N not that Sir Wade and the other guardians are. I mean to say that, uh, the... It's all right. We know what you mean. There is only so much the boy can learn from me, my lord. But a squire... Would that really be so bad? You were a squire once? And I'm certain so Rodney would approve. <sighs> know that I'll show you as much leniency as your uncle showed me. I would not have it any other way. Is much more formidable than your uncle. Should I be worried? Uh, you haven't been introduced. Jill, Clive's told me much about you. All lies, I'm sure. Your stone has said that Dalinil has a bandit problem. Indeed. Although you're a little late. They left with our food and gill days ago. Any idea where they went? 
The desert's a big place. Your guess is as good as mine. But the fact is, I have more immediate concerns. What did you say to me? What did you say? Ah, as if by magic. Let's just say we've yet to reach a consensus about how to solve Dalinel's little problem. And at this rate, it won't be the ashes of the bandits which prove to be our undoing. It will be our own. I've tried reasoning with the dissenting parties, but even the desert hair has limits. Perhaps we could talk to them. What makes you think they'll listen to us? What makes you think they won't? She makes a fair point, Sid. And you won't have wasted much of your precious time if you fail. They're just across the courtyard. The birds would just follow the shouting. What I saw was a room full of people who were angry and afraid. And with good reason by the sound of it. But if left a smaller, that anger and fear could set the entire town alight. My thoughts exactly. Ah, uh, what to do? Both sides wish to protect their homes and livelihoods, if only they could agree on how. But as long as they are divided, we are vulnerable. And if there's one thing bandits like, it's an easy target. What would Sid the Outlaw suggest? Well, if it were my namesake, he'd let them choose for themselves and be on hand to pick up the pieces when it all went wrong. That sounds like a recipe for disaster. The recipe for disaster is precisely what it is. But perhaps that realization would be enough to make them question the ingredients. Why not explain neither Conrad nor Lackley will countenance the other's proposal, 
it may still be possible to make them doubt their own before presenting them with a third option and that would be to pool our resources and save the city ourselves why fight each other when all that fear and anger can be directed to the bandits it appears we have a plan of action victor pay conrad a visit see if you can't convince him of his folly i'll speak with natalie as you wish Your faces are not well known in this town. That may prove useful. Don't worry, Victor and I will do most of the talking. You need only play along. Play along. What he means to say is yes. Two score swords assigned each one. Granted, we have a few boys left. If it's boys you're looking for. Well, Conrad, are you saying that Dallum's finest cannot defend the town better than a gaggle of unblooded striplings? That a band of beardless youths could better avenge the deaths of your brave men than you yourselves? Absolutely not. We we'll show those bastards who they're dealing with. I can't believe that actually worked. Conrad's not what you call the brightest candle in the crypt. And there's a reason why I had you do the talking and not Sid. Well played, my lady. Everything. 
If our humble town is to endure not only this hardship, but those that are certain to follow, we must stand united. All right. If it will help to protect my home, I'll do it. But you needn't have gone through this charade. Thank you, Clive. Your performance was nothing if not workmanlike. She saw right through it. I didn't say it was good, merely that it produced the desired effect. Now, my scouts should be returning shortly. Meet me back at the Briar's Kiss, and we shall see what we face. I'm not convinced our roles in this route were entirely necessary. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, Nancy might take it with you. Molly, I'm scared. Oh, I'm ruined. Good news, Sid. Both Conrad and Natalie have somewhat gracefully accepted their new roles. With time, they may even learn to. Time no longer appears to be the luxury it was before lunch. I take it your scouts found the bandits. Technically, it would be the bandits who found my scouts. It appears they march for Delamil as we speak. All of them. You're not serious. They don't just want food, they want the whole damn town. I have a favor to ask. I'm told, I'm told the bandits, bandits march in two groups, one from the south and one from the desert, in a move doubtless intended to stretch our already gossamer thin defenses. Very well. Jill and I will meet those from the desert, but what of the rest? The rest, my friend, the city shall fight. Together. The stakes I concede are high. But if this does not unite Delamil, nothing will. That is a lot of faith to put into those who had their hands around each other's throats but a moment ago. Then it will be for us to see that their hands are kept occupied. And I do mean us. I thought you might say that. We'll hold them off for as long as we can. And we will do the same. Oh, my God. 
some people. Could they have held out? I'm nearly fighting. What do you think? Then we should hurry. Without you, there would have been no line to hold. You, you saved, saved us, Conrad. You saved Alamil. We all saved Alamil. Conrad seems to have had a change of heart. I'd say they both have. I take it from your presence that our visitors from the desert won't be joining us either. Pity. But the plan worked, Sid. Granted, it only took an army of bloodthirsty bandits at our gate. Come now, Victor, why quibble over the details? We are united, and that is all that matters. As for you, Sid, you fight considerably better than you act. I'll take that as a compliment. So it was not Sylvester, but Olivier, who served as Ultima's puppet. And when Dion learned of this, he sought to slay the fiend. Only for his father to take the spear that would have freed him. Enough to drive a man to madness. So one day he hasn't stirred. reached out to him sooner, warned him of the threat Ultima posed. But now, both an empire and her prince lie broken. Joshua, what do you know of Ultima? Very little, I'm afraid, despite my best efforts. Eighteen years ago, as I lay buried beneath the rubble of Phoenix Gate, it was not death who came for me, but another. And it was while in my rescuer's care I first heard of Ultima. I've been chasing his shadow ever since. 
heart to my spirit and my son deep dark purpose. And for whatever reason, it would seem you are crucial to his designs. He will stop at nothing to have you, even if that means toppling an empire. Why me? What possible use could I be to such a creature? That is one of the many answers that have eluded me. Yet, I am certain of this. It is not mere chance. You were chosen for a reason. All dominance carry within them the might of an icon. Nigh limitless power that is at once acutely limited. I wield fire, and only fire. And I only ice. Eight wardens for eight elements. But you, Clive. You are different. You are special. Your abilities begin with the flames of Ifrit. But they do not end there. The fact Ifrit can even exist goes against everything we thought we knew of dominance. Perhaps Ultima has been waiting for one such as you, whose potential is truly Limitless. I've encountered that thing several times now. If it or he is you say needs me, why hasn't he claimed me as he did the way? Were I to hazard a guess, I'd say the two of you are somehow incompatible. His mind is not properly attuned to your body. His mind? Mind. Awareness, spirit, call it what you wish, but I believe Ultima to be an embodiment of the concept. This is why I struggle and fail to contain the air inside me. I'm sorry, inside you. With every setting sun, I feel my strength wane. And though the phoenix's flames mend the prism I have made for Ultima, they do so at a cost. We must find a means to bring an end to him before I meet my own. What were you thinking? It was that or let him take life. And I've always had a soft spot for my brother. But that doesn't mean you should sacrifice yourself to save me. I feel I may safely rejoin my attendant, who was to wait for me in Tabor if we became separate. 